I read this book and I think there's like two people that I could really see this book being for, right? Well, the first one is, uh, as you described there, like the uh, somebody who uh, is into guns, perhaps knows about, you know, knows the political noise around them, but wants to be a bit more knowledgeable on the debate and the details of it and the the sort of the best pro-gun arguments f- that are out there. Uh, those that that's certainly contained in this book. I think you know somebody who is who's a gun owner who wants to get a little more up to speed on uh, you know the political debate is going to get a lot out of this book and is probably going to really agree with it. You know because the the perspective comes through too, right? As the as a pro-gun person who's been doing this for uh, decades, long time. Uh, yeah, at this point, uh, you know, obviously your perspective is is shines through in a lot of this. And, you know, the second person I think that it's for is somebody who wants to understand that. Maybe they don't agree. Maybe they're on the other side, um, but they want to understand as best as possible the arguments that uh, you know, pro-gun people really believe in. And then that's where you know, I, I would recommend a book like this to, to somebody like that. If they can get through like the, uh, the, um, the pro gun perspective, you know, yeah. it reminds me a lot of, um, Kevin Williamson. He's a writer for, uh, for, was for national review. I think he's at the dispatch now. Uh, he's written prolifically. He's out there. He writes about guns from time to time and he can be very sardonic and, and, uh, you know, like, He's very uh, uh, secure in his uh, point of view, right? Just as you are in your writing, uh, very passionate about it. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? Well, I think on that note, it's actually I'm I I I'm a, I, I write comedy novels too. I write I actually mm-hmm. have a comedy series, and so I, and I put a lot of comedy into like my regular books. So for me, writing a nonfiction book. It would be impossible for me to write a book that was like a hundred percent academic, right. straight down the line, serious. I even said and that. And it probably wouldn't be as interesting to read either, to be frank. Yeah. I was trying to do something that could be entertaining for people too, because honestly, mm-hmm. like people who are already on our side, they're gonna love the book. And and some of yeah. my reviews are showing that. People who believe in guns, they're like, Yeah, this is how I feel. This 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 says what I want to say. You know, this speaks for me. And that's cool. But now getting to like to out to regular people who are just kind of like on the fence, you know, part of the thing is I, I wanted to kind of use my writer skills, I guess, to, to hook them and to, and to kind of tell the story of the Second Amendment in the U.S. and how it works. And when I get into current events, I don't hold anything back. I don't go cold and analytical. Uh, I, I get I go in there you know, swinging. I, I, I tell people this is how it is. This is how it is logically. This is how it is emotionally. This is how we react to this stuff. Um, and I use tons of examples, uh, real life examples. I cite everything. I've got you know, 13 yeah. pages of small print sites for every every incident I talk about is in this book. It's very um, true. But I just wanted to write it in a way so people understand. So like I, I opened the book actually talking about like the visceral aftermath on the news when we when we see some horrible thing happen on the news, and then I talk about kind of like the the worst people um, who use that uh, to their advantage to to twist uh, and twist people's emotions and to try to push for, for uh, more gun control, regardless of what actually happened, facts be damned. And uh, that's what I open with. And it, it's kind of raw, you know, it, mm-hmm. it's, it's yeah. honest. Um, but then I, I get into, I get into the book. I, I try to talk about every single argument they throw at us. Every point that I could think of going back for 30 years. It's very comprehensive in that, in that regard. It, it absolutely is. There is the whole section on do some things, right? People always say after a mass shooting, you need to do something. And so you do go through effectively every significant suggestion there is from the more, uh, from the, the lighter policies all the way through to full on gun confiscation. And you explain, I think, in pretty plain terms with a lot of uh, sourcing why that's not a good idea, why each of these policies won't do what they intend or their half measures or that that will, uh, you know, have less of an effect on the people they actually want to affect and more of an effect on law abiding gun owners. And uh, this is extremely thorough in that regard. Um, And I would say, like, uh, to the Kevin Williamson Comparison. He wrote a piece a while back uh, where he essentially edited a, uh, 
a news report that was about firearms and it was poorly done report. And so he went through and he was not kind about it, right? He was very uh, um, straightforward and uh, made all of the remarks that he would have made if he was editing the piece itself. Uh, and it's something that probably would have turned off some some of the people, like the people who wrote the actual news story or edited it before it was published, probably wouldn't like that piece. But if they could get through the the part where he's uh, frankly righteously indignatious about how many mistakes there are, there's so much to actually learn from that, you know, because it's not. And this is where I see the parallel to your book because. These, you're not throwing out a bunch of straw man arguments. You're not throwing out like just it's the Second Amendment. It's my right. I don't care about what you're arguing, what you're saying. You actually go through and engage with these arguments and give the countervailing view, like give give the reasons why you don't think that they make sense and don't work. Um, and it's something that, uh, you know, you're not shy about it. People who agree with you are going to really like this book. Uh, but I think people who don't agree with you will get value out of it as well if they, if they can get uh, you know, pick it up and read it. I've actually found it's really interesting because I divide the anti-gun camp into basically two groups in the book, just for simplicity's mm -hmm. sake. I know people are far more complicated than just that. But when you think about it, there's there's basically, there's regular people who want to do something to stop violent crime. They want to stop murders. They want to stop killings. And they've been told that if we just control guns, we can do that. They've been They've been given this promise their whole life. They've been told that, 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 you know, ban guns, shootings won't happen anymore. Take handguns off the streets, criminals won't shoot people. Uh, take away assault weapons and there won't be mass shootings anymore, so on and so forth, whatever it is. But they've been, they've been sold this bill of gold goods their whole life. And that's one group that I can reach because I can say, okay, look, this is what you believe and this is why you believe it. And, and, and I get that. However, Let's go into what actually happens. Let's go into the reality. Let's go into the logic. Let's go into the logistics. Let's go into the history. Let's look at other states that have done it. Let's look at other countries that have done it. And this is what actually happens. So that first group I, I have hope for, and I have over the years, I have actually you know, had people change their mind uh, on, on the gun debate because they, need, they got better information or reality smacked them in the face. And all of a sudden they're like, wow, okay, I, I do need self-defense. But then there's the other group, the smaller group that I, I don't have any hopes of converting. Um, and that's the ones that in the book I would talk about the vultures, right? about the, 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 the vulture chapter. And I use vultures because that's the, the nicest term that the publisher would let me, the lawyers would let me use. Um, but I say vultures because they're perched and they're waiting for carnage. They're waiting for death. And as soon as there's blood, they swoop right in and they are on it. And it doesn't matter what actually happened. It doesn't matter the reality of the case. It doesn't matter the facts of the case. They will argue immediately while emotions are high to, to get whatever they want. And I, I go into that a lot. And, and that's the part really where honestly, my I think no matter how good of a writer I am, my personal disdain is going to come through. Um, well, I'm sure you're not the only person who feels that way. About, that's yeah. what I mean. Like people who agree with, with you and, and who've noticed that, sort of activists that exists out there. Um, I mean, yeah, they're, they're going to enjoy reading that chapter because well, and they, then, honestly, you're putting into words the way they feel about uh, this certain section of uh, sort of people who operate in bad faith. Yeah. Well, because uh, the first yeah. group of honest people who just are, are don't know any better, they actually read stuff like that. And it puts it for the first time in their lives. You're like, oh, wow. So this is this. this I, I'm now in the gun guy's shoes. I'm not looking at it from the perspective of this guy and how they feel about this and what they want to do. And, and it's one way to actually reach that first group is you got, is you hook them and you say, okay, look, this is because a lot of times too often we have this, this argument and it's like you, you're fighting and we always try to go facts, 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 academic, cold, hard stats versus emotion. And we're just beating them over the head, but that's not how human brains work. And, and so a lot, if you have a person who's, wired emotionally, you're not going to sway them with that. So that's why I come at this kind of as, an, as a narrative kind of thing. It's like, look, this is, this is, I'm, I'm, so here's the thing, because logically we win. Uh, emotionally they win, but it doesn't have to be that way. Um, because there's some fundamental basic truths that resonate with people that we have on our side. And that's self-defense is a human right. And the, the state can't come and save you. 
And this is emotional stuff. And so it's one thing is like, I'm, I'm trying to get that out there and, and try to, like, like I said, help hopefully sway some people or hopefully, you know, I, I have friends that like, I, I use an example, a good friend of mine, he, he wants to have a gun in the house uh, for home defense and his wife won't let him. I mean, we've all heard that story before, right? You know? And so I'm writing a book for guys like that, you know, give, give, read this, give this to your wife and, and hopefully, you know, make a dent in that. But I don't know. We'll see. 